welcome everybody. Uh, thanks for joining this session uh, with uh, Robin, um, our good friends from uh, Ocean Insights, uh, just down the road here in here in Hamburg. Um, Robin, thanks a lot for for joining us today at the Digital Container Summit 2010 2020. Um, yeah, I think I'll just leave the stage to you. Um, feel free to introduce yourself. I think it's amazing what you guys are doing at uh, at Ocean Insights. Essentially, uh, combining a lot of uh, publicly available uh, data and uh, private data, first, not, not personal data, but um, non-publicly available data into um, visibility for the supply chain. Um, yeah, excited to hear more uh, about what you can tell us and what your view is about the daring to sharing data. Very good. Thank you so much. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Robin from Ocean Insights, and uh, you know, I'm one of the very fortunate speakers. We actually made it through the office here, so uh, I'm, I, I crave for every opportunity where you know we don't have an exclusively virtual meeting and interaction. So once again, thank you all for having me here. Well, today I would like to talk about um, the, you know the value of data sharing, and you may say you know we've been here before, we've heard all that, and true, we're not the first to pioneer the concept of data sharing. But I guess um, you know recent advancements of, in the technology uh, and, and, and also recent product developments on our side enable us and enable customers to really uh, dig a little deeper uh, as far as uh, you know the value of, of their data is concerned. And um, you know there's there are you know great things you could do about uh, data sharing insights you otherwise wouldn't have. And uh, you know despite the fact that we didn't invent data sharing, despite the fact that we didn't pioneer data sharing, I'd still like to uh, you know showcase you what our contribution uh, in this field is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. Now before we uh, actually start, let me um, let me uh, you know say a few words about Ocean Insights. I think the context matters here, right? Yeah, otherwise, marketing. <laughs> no, no, okay. no, no, but I think the context matters. Otherwise. Um, it's kind of difficult to understand what we do. So Ocean Insights is in um, the field of ocean visibility. I always say we do one thing and one thing only, and this is keeping track of your containers. And we do so since 2015. Um, you know, um, we, we collect data from ports, terminals, shipping lines, from the vessels themselves, and um, you know, standardize and consolidate the data in, in, in uh, you know, one database. Pretty straightforward. I think um, you know, many companies have been here before, you've got, you know, Intra, Cargo Smart, you can access EI feeds and all that. Um, yes, uh, and still we came to the conclusion, um, we still came to the conclusion that, uh, you know, it makes sense to, uh, you know, add, add you know, our contribution to um, this market. And this is because we figured out at some point in the past that many shippers around the world don't really feel comfortable with the data quality, right? So when we talk about digitalization, what we usually mean or what customers usually mean is of course um, automation, right? Mm -hmm. And very few customers actually felt comfortable with uh, building automation processes and reporting logics purely on top of say EDI data, right? Data is great, but you know, you have to apply some logic and you have to have some insights uh, about specifics. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So in that regard, uh, we thought we could make a difference. And um, well now today Ocean Insights um, tracks containers for customers in over 50 countries, uh, our core, uh, our core customers are the very big shippers because they have the biggest pain points. And uh, you know, we provide um, visibility data for container shipments through our own UI, but of course also through an API because we very much understand our position is the position of a data provider and uh, visibility data needs to, connect, needs to be connected with um, transport management systems, resource planning systems, and you know, whatnot, mm -hmm. right? So, at the end of the day, there are a trillion things you can do with, with visibility data, and I'm not going into the details here, but you know, just having a better idea about the ETA, about um, the merge cases, about supply chain optimization potential, about making smarter contracts, having more educated discussion with your suppliers, all that is possible with visibility. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm confident to say that we have found our niche, so you know, this is where we feel comfortable. Um, and uh, well, if we look at the data that we actually collect, yeah, mm -hmm. um, we can say, well, we work a lot with publicly, assess publicly accessible data, right? Vessel positions, sailing schedules, tracking information, and you know, incident reports. And um, you know, we, we, we process the data, we standardize the data, but um, um, our customers, they would also share confidential proprietary data with us, oftentimes about trade flows, booking allocations, uh, volume changes, uh, customer names, merge fees, equipment times, all that, right? Mm -hmm. Now, um, 
until very recently, um, you know, our, our perspective on this was, you know, you do not want to share your data with anyone else. This is yours, and this is like your private database, and no one has access to this. We're not going to deviate from this kind of uh, 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 service. At the same time, we also found out that many customers are indeed um, kind of uh, willing to share certain data points, which are until very recently considered absolutely no goals to share, right? So about um, volumes and allocations, for example. This yeah, is something everything that's commercially relevant. Super sensible yeah. data, yeah. yeah. And um, at the same time, you know, we found that if you share some of these data within a, in a, within a network of, of um, trusted partners, um, sorry, this is the wrong one. Within a network of trusted partners, um, you uh, can gain quite a lot out of it, mm -hmm. right? So let's quickly talk about the challenges of data sharing, which are which are not exclusive to us and which are probably you know uh, on everybody's mind. So first of all, um, the data is oftentimes stored in very different databases, right? You have SAP here, you have Oracle there, you have some uh, AWS stuff, and you know whatever. They are not connected, not the same language. Super, super tiny, uh, so it's super difficult to connect all this. Mm -hmm. And of course, companies are with good reason reluctant to share. Mm -hmm. Such data, mm -hmm. they may be willing, but there are uh, legal challenges too. And um, you do not always have a um, consolidation, a data consolidation provider. This is one aspect one must not forget, right? So even if you're willing to share data, you have to have someone who's ideally a neutral party who would then um, manage, um, you know, the consolidation effort, right, and, and, and deliver the results. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, there are two million more challenges, but uh, in a nutshell, this is probably something we should um, talk about. Mm -hmm. And um, well, today I would like to give you some perspective on what we think is now possible with um, you know some new technologies, some 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 movements on the customer side, right? So essentially, mm -hmm. it's up to them. And um, you know, three things I brought today, which I'd like to discuss: ETA predictions, right? So it may be it may be um, surprising to hear that ETA predictions is also something that has to do with data sharing. I'd like to talk about this. Then um, we found that many customers really crave for Lead time and service reliability benchmarking, right? And I guess you know um, everyone knows there's intelligence, there are you know reports, uh, but these usually affect the wider market. So you can you can tell what's the performance on the transatlantic trade, but mm -hmm. you can't really say you know how, how am I comparing to my closest peers, right? So so mm -hmm. you have two extremes. So you have your data and you have the wider market data, but sometimes the context matters a lot um, because you may not want to have. Um, all your refresh shipments connect, collect, uh, considered in, in a specific analysis. Mm -hmm. right? You know, the trillion reasons, and if there's one thing I learned about shipping, then there yeah. are no easy answers, and you always have to look at the nitty gritty details. Yeah, yeah, yeah. true. Right. And um, last but not least, one, one other idea or one other project is booking integrity, right? It happens very often that you book something with a specific shipping line by the premium service, and they put you on a transshipment service. It takes ages to get you from A to B. No, that's something which is, I guess, uh, well known. But um, booking integrity is something we can monitor very well by comparing um, your bookings, your allocations to, you know, for example, how others uh, get along on this specific trade line. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So whether you were the only one whose cargo was rolled or moved to a different service, or for example, yeah. To be very honest, we're at the very nascent stage with all that, and uh, I think both on the customer side and also on the service. So by our side, um, you know, you need to get your head around the actual issue and how to translate this into um, actionable insights. But I promise we're getting there. And um, yeah, so it's all about making, you know, allowing customers to make changes, adjustments to their planning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. That's and these three use cases, who are they most relevant for? Transformers, VCOs? Well, you know, I think the predictions, um, you know, that's, that's probably the most Prominent thing everyone's talking about predictions these days, and um, you know we we were pushed pretty hard by our customers from the German automotive industry. And if you're tuning in, you know who I'm talking to. Yeah. So um, they you know they were not happy with um, they were not happy with the quality of the ETAs uh, that came from the shipping lines, right? Mm -hmm. Or that they got from the ports. And they said in order to um, you know figure out very early on if I may need um, if I may need um, air freight. To you know, get, get a set one thousand screws out of China to Germany fast. Um, I need to have more predictability in mm -hmm. that field. The predictions are super hard to make, right? So there's always an inherent trade-off between um, you know, do you want to just 
notify someone that something's wrong, maybe, mm -hmm. or do you want to uh, come up with a very specific prediction? And, and, and you know, these are mutually exclusive ends sometimes. So, um, but anyway, um, this, this, this is something where data sharing, even on a meta level, right, um, makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. I'll get to this in a second. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, another thing, you know, when we uh, talk to our customers, we figured out that many of our, our customers are uncomfortable with um, with you know just sharing data randomly with the wider market, so to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, they are not allowed to do so because of some 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 competitive uh, restraints, um, but um, they would feel comfortable sharing data in a, in a, in a as we call it, data sharing club, mm -hmm. where you know your peers, you know exactly why your data shared, with whom it is shared, and um, and, and and you also have control about this data, mm -hmm. right? So it's 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 something where we uh, figure out that some FMCG companies they are totally happy with sharing their um, you know confidential data with retail companies, uh, textile companies, because they don't care, they don't, they're not competitors, right? Mm -hmm. And um, you know. This is something where we feel we can build a lot of trust. And we can uh, have have a have a well, a club, so to say, mm -hmm. right? Where people know each other, trust each other, or at least don't have any competitive issues with each other. Okay, so you would even share the information whose data this is with others. Exactly, so it's not not anonymized, but uh, really identified. Yeah. Exactly, maybe in the, maybe once you give it in, yeah. it's anonymized yeah. to a certain degree. Yeah. yeah, but you know exactly it's those five companies. It's that that ten okay, companies. Gotcha. That's a bit of the trade off between. You know, ideally, from a technical perspective, it would make sense to share all your data with everyone. Mm -hmm. But uh, taking into consideration these um, constraints, yeah, um, uh, this year is then probably the second best thing you could do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Cool. Now let's get uh, to the first example, um, and, and I would talk, like to talk about the predictions, right? Mm -hmm. I, I can I ask you? I mean, like predictions is probably something um, everyone wants to know what the future looks like. It's probably it's a it's something. Of course, yeah. Where you invest some uh, resources as well. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. I mean, predictions, especially uh, for our clients, it's, it's relevant for the uh, for the container owners. Um, yeah. They want to know when are the units back uh, at their stack, at their depot. Uh, what's the expected uh, damages on these units? Right. 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 Everybody wants to sort of get a get a, get ahead of the curve. Yeah. So. Right. But then you also know how difficult this is to come up with something that's you know halfway reliable. Um, now. You know, I can tell you, for example, first, what doesn't work, right? So you can't just take a bunch of historic data, mm -hmm. connect it with AI, and then expect some good, good results. It, it, it simply doesn't work. Um, so we have access to hundreds of thousands of data points of past shipments, and, and, and so do you probably. There are AIS resources where you can build your own algorithms. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we tried it all out, and, and, and the results were rather underwhelming. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, this is for two reasons. So first of all, Having this historic data, you know, kind of difficult. You have to you have to figure out if it's a good thing or a bad thing that the vessel now makes a left turn or a right turn, right? Mm -hmm. So without having the context, mm -hmm. then it's you know it's, it's it's basically a worthless piece of information to know that the vessel is here or there, right? Mm -hmm. Therefore, um, we leverage um, data um, from which we have from customers on a meta level, mm -hmm. um, and we also leverage. Um, market intelligence data, which we derive also by looking at the wider market's data. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then it has nothing to do with the actual data sharing, which I'm talking about today. But then we uh, have built a very specific algorithm rather than AI. You know, mm -hmm. I always say, and this is what my tech people tell me, AI is super helpful if you have large amounts of unstructured data, right? But the very data we are working with here is, is well structured. That's our job. I mean, it's it's you know, a data structuring company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in a nutshell, I want to make sure that you know my, my point here is the one uh, message I'd like to convey is that um, you would even find the benefits of data sharing in fields of like like predictions, and it's kind of unlikely. Some some people somehow expected this, but um, others say, hmm, "How comes?" And I tell you, it's the only way. That's the only feasible way. Mm -hmm. One 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 thing I have to say is the data which we use for predictions is. Not the kind of uh, confidential data, not the kind of proprietary data, yeah. But it's 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 kind of the meta data level about uh, you know patterns in the data that we see. But nevertheless, it's fed from from analysis which we derive from from uh, looking at, at broad sets, large sets of data. Okay. Okay. Interesting. I think there's uh, there's one question here from from Peter, which, which potentially fits to fits to this discussion about uh, structure of data. It says how easy is it to integrate with these. Uh, 
data sets or a yeah. few uh, as yeah. a data integrator. Yeah. Um, I guess that touches also on the, the question of like how 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 difficult or how long is your onboarding process for, for your clients? Right, right, right. That's an excellent question. I mean we hear this a lot, what about the CSA, the EI feeds already, um, all that. That's you know, that's true. And um, I guess uh, it really depends on, on on your need, right? So for some people, it may be sufficient to have a to work with the DCSA standard. Mm -hmm. um, and um, in other cases, some customers, which uh, if I may put it this way, are looking for some more sophisticated applications and, and, and some automation and, and you know some 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 uh, process automation and some you know nitty gritty detail analysis. Mm -hmm. um, they would probably need to a certain degree a more structured and um, more structured data set. It's not only about the structure, I have to say. It's also about um, you know knowing exactly where the gaps in the data are, right? So um, you can have the best data structure, but if you simply don't get a certain data point, um, like like vessel actual maybe, um, you know even the best data structure won't get you very far. And this is where you know again uh, we try to make a difference. We are connected to other data sources as well, and then fit it into um, the standards which we have defined. It's not really either or. It's it's kind of a complementary um, thing, you know. Looking at the um, looking at the implementation timeline, um, yeah, I guess we, we you know we spent a lot of effort at making this a turnkey solution. This means um, as soon as you uh, you know subscribe to our API or use our UI, um, you're ready to go, right? So um, I think on average we pride ourselves with having an onboarding time of on average a week. So that's just as a side note. Yeah, but we try to keep it simple. Okay, and that's for the data that sort of I as a client feed into your system to get the predictions back. And um, it also applies for the data that you sort of feed back into my TMS. Or right. Yeah, for example, yeah, exactly. I mean, like at the end of the day, we don't control the connectivity from us to your SAP, for example. Uh, you probably have some people working with your SAP who would then uh, integrate the API. Mm -hmm. But um, there are many standard and off the shelf solutions available already. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's, what we, that's what we are today. Yeah, yeah, very good. Very good. And then there was another question from from Eddie, um, who says uh, most companies still feel like they lose they lose something when they share data. Um, how yeah. do they overcome these these negativities? I mean, one element you already mentioned, you can get together in a car of people you trust. Um, yeah. What else? Is there? Well, you know, excellent point. Uh, I think um, that's 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 a predominant feeling. And you know, what can I say? I I, I kind of understand this, this this feeling, and therefore I say it always needs to be clear. Why you are sharing this data, and you know what can you get out of it? And if I tell you, well, you can have, you can, you can get out of it this report, that report, which will help you to make smarter decisions for procurement, which will help you make smarter decisions for your uh, network structure. Well, then you, act, you know, then for you it's a trade-off, kind of trade-off where you say, well, you know, this is what I pay, I pay with my data here, and this is what I get out of it. Mm -hmm. And I also think, well, this may be like like an emotional argument, but I think if you know your peers, if you know the people within that specific group, you may be a little less reluctant because you, well, we're not talking about thousands and hundreds of thousands of, of, of members uh, mm -hmm. in such data sharing clubs. We're talking about 10, 15 companies mm -hmm. at best, right? And um, I guess, you know, uh, Annie's question um, circles back to, to, you know, what am I getting out of it? And if you don't know what you can get out of it, it's, it's, then it's too abstract. We have to, you know, we have to be measured uh, at the results. Okay, gotcha. Although, I mean, when I think about sort of benchmarking that really makes sense or that really delivers value, the more companies participate in benchmarking, right? Exactly, the, the network effect. But, um, you know, we, we work with customers that have um, sometimes 10,000 containers, but others have 200 or 300 or 500,000 containers, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, they are the market to a certain degree if you ship that many containers on specific routes, right? And uh, if you put three or four of these together, you have uh, you know at least very significant findings in mm -hmm. a statistical sense. Yeah. 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 Cool. Okay. Interesting. I hope we answered your question. Um, then there was uh, Vinicius. Um, what do uh, small and medium companies uh, need to do in order to integrate with other companies at low cost? Um, maybe that doesn't only apply to integrating with you, but yeah, with each other. I guess. Sure. Well, I think you know, especially uh, SMEs may have a you know they have a it's a great opportunity right now because um, I feel that um, you know looking at our customer base maybe and looking at some 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 of our peers customer base they work with very big companies and very small companies alike right so the very big shippers they feel 
well, you know, this year is too much of a niche. This year is too specific so that we would, wouldn't want to uh, put any effort in building this internally. Mm -hmm. And this leaves open the room for, ocean, for, for companies like Ocean Insights or, you know, any others, um, where you build a commodity, something that's uh, available as a commodity in the market, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and instead of, um, you know, you, you, I, I guess as an SME, you may have a difficult time of outcompeting um, the very big corporations at every level, right? But now having having startups like ours um, available as a commodity in the market is, 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 is kind of an amazing opportunity because you can contract this as, and, 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 you know, you can contract this. It's, a, it's something that's available on the market and it's no longer within, um, you know, the, the control of, of, of your competitors, maybe. Yeah. So as a, as a neutral sort of data store for data integrator? Uh, yes, and, and, and once again, my point is um, this year is a very specific niche service and so are others. And, uh, you know, we can only survive if we work with more or less everyone in the market. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so... Um, okay, but I think sort of this question also goes into the direction. If I, you know, I'm a, I'm a small company, I don't have uh, many resources, especially not in necessary resources. I might have, have not, might not have the, the best sort of technological setup, sure. uh, but I work off Excel sheets or yeah. you know, Google sheets. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, what do I do? Well, and, and once again, I think um, there are many, many, many um, young technology companies which are open for business, which uh, somehow or, or high talent actually gravitates around, and uh, these guys are always happy to help. I mean, what you just brought up, uh, translating kind of Excel sheets into nice UIs, bringing this to your customers, uh, having having maybe a white label solution. You know, I, I know many instances where uh, companies provide exactly these kind of services. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that I think is the way forward and this allows um, you know SMEs or whoever to really focus on the core business and have have strong partners yeah. in the technology field. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Makes sense. So that's my take on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah very good. Very good. Yeah. Um, I think we deviated a little bit uh, to concentric but no, questions. Super question. I think the, that was that was worth excellent that. excellent well you know since we're already here I would like to bring up a, a second uh, example. Kind of abstract, but um, the, the topic of lead times and booking integrity is really huge. Now, everyone knows uh, sailing schedules, right? And sailing schedules are, well, you know, depending on what you're looking for, they can be kind of unreliable. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's more like an you know, intention of what a shipping lane would like to do rather than uh, a commitment. True. And um, at, at the same time, you can't completely ignore these, um, uh, can't completely ignore. Um, um, sailing schedules. Mm -hmm. Well, but still, um, looking at our um, automotive companies, for example, they have SAP and they have some some underlying lead times in their production planning system. And uh, if you ask where these lead times come from, they usually say, "Well, the kind of the best guess, gut feeling, sometimes sailing schedule." And of course, well, you know, that's that's not good enough in in, in 2020, right? Um, if we talk about reducing. Um, the um, uh, you know capital exposure. If we talk about uh, having having uh, lower inventory here, or maybe more inventory. This can also be an outcome of a of a of a, of a diligent analysis of your lead times. Well, then you know this is quite something. It gets you very far, right? You have to know what the actuals are rather than what you know you hope uh, is the lead time. Yeah. Yeah. I guess we, you know, we, we collect lead times uh, for 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 individual companies already, and we tell you uh, exactly on which services you shipped on, and then we can compare to uh, you know what service you 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 um, booked on, mm -hmm. right? So this is what we mean by booking integrity. So for mm -hmm. example, you say you book the FAL eight service, right, and you get the ERA service with the transshipment port. Well, then you know this is something you would probably want to discuss with your service providers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, doing this on large on a large scale with analysis is, is quite something that is something that comes in quite handy for many of our customers. Mm -hmm. The cool thing then is not only to know what am I doing, mm -hmm. what's but but you know what are my peers doing, right? Is it only me who is uh, maybe ha having a, a strain of bad luck, right? So I mean, it's only me getting transshipped. But no, we want to tell you um, what the average performance, what median performance is of 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 your peers, right? And uh, now, I guess some of our listeners will say, well, there are companies like, like C Intelligence and, and you know, there are tons of benchmark out there. True. Uh, we don't definitely, we definitely don't consider this as a, as a substitute. 
uh, simply serves different needs, mm -hmm. right? So um, it's difficult from what we hear to just take some industry benchmarks to have an educated discussion with your shipping ends of freight for what is about their performance. You know, they will say, you know what? It's 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 easy to point out flaws in these in these data sets. So we just get yeah get them too broad. Yeah. So um, and, and therefore we say there's value in having um, a better idea of where this data is coming from. You know who's uh, contributing to this data. Yeah. So this is kind of what we're hinting at. Um, mm -hmm. We see value in building these data sharing clubs and, 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 and you know helping customers to uh, be in such networks. And um, I guess. You know, uh, we, we, we also think that data sharing is something, once again, we have pioneered, but where we think um, new applications can be rolled out pretty easily. Uh, and um, yeah, so looking at our roadmap and I guess looking at the roadmap of many other companies, I guess that this thing will become much bigger in the future. Okay, super interesting, super interesting. We have um, a couple of minutes left, so if you have any, any further questions, then uh, please, please, please drop them drop them in the, in the chat on the, on the right-hand side. Um, you mentioned at the beginning of our conversation. You managed. Uh, you, men you mentioned uh, integrations also with let's let's call them third-party data providers. Right. Um, might be ports, or terminals, or other sources. Yeah. Um, I I hear again and again in, in the market that uh, also these providers are very reluctant to share data because they say <laughs> it's not my data; it's my client's data, and I don't want to touch it. Right. Um, what do you say to that, and how do you sometimes overcome that? Yeah, uh, excellent question, and uh, that's that's something we have to, you know, this question we have to deal with every day. I think um, building trust, building networks, building, you know, inviting them to join us is, is, is one way to do it. But I think the most powerful leverage that we have is to say, well, that you know, Ocean Insights or, or other companies that are in the data structuring and data processing field do not actually own the data, right? Mm -hmm. So we work exclusively on behalf of their key clients. They contract our service. They say, well, you know, we want our data to be processed by a company like us. And um, well, this, I guess, is, 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 you know, something that's in the mutual interest. Mm -hmm. um, you're right. I mean, this won't get you very far um, always, but it, it helps you to get at least the most relevant data points. And again, the, the data which we process is not ours. It's, it's our customer's data, right? It's um, data processing companies and, uh, you know, take a fee for helping, you know, to, to maintain the database, to structure the database and, you know, all that. Yeah, so that's kind of our, our approach here. Yeah. Okay. okay, cool. Then maybe one, one last question from my side. Uh, again, if you have any, any further questions, then uh, feel free to, to drop them there. Um, if I'm now listening and I'm a small freight forwarder, I maybe move, I don't know, 1,500 containers uh, right. a year or something like that. Um, and I'm interested in this, but I don't have any friends, so to speak. I don't have any club yet yeah. um, with whom I could benchmark myself or share data. Right. What do I do? How do I get started? Yeah, so I think um, getting in touch with us in the first place is a great <laughs> idea. Um, so, uh, I, you know, we, we, we started with the big shippers because it makes things easier. But we also have plans, uh, in, 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 you know, we have, we have plans to extend this uh, in a, to, 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 to other shippers, which, as you mentioned, don't have friends. Um, and uh, I guess we have some legal obstacles here. We have some some, some obstacles as far as willingness from certain shippers is concerned. Um, but I guess um, it's, 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 it's for sure that we're getting there for others. But, you know, the, the, the long tail, if I may put it this way, super valuable market. And um, I don't know exactly the numbers, but uh, you may know better. Um, these shippers make up for a very, very significant share of the market combined, right? And um, I guess um, the only thing that's holding us back so far is the complexity, right? We start with the uh, low hanging fruits and uh, yeah. big shippers, and at some point we'll get there for sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. And while you're talking, uh, one more additional question came to my mind at least. Um, transparency and visibility is great in general, yeah, right? Like I, would, I would sign that statement. Um, but of course, there's also companies or people who, who lose out or who are interested in keeping things opaque. Um, right. I don't want to call anybody out, uh, but uh, if I think about shipping lines, or if I'm if I'm a shipping line, I might, you know, actually be reluctant to right. have my clients see that data. Um, what, what's your? You know, I always say uh, 
think you know many a few not many but a few shipping lines also think it's a fantastic opportunity right because if you do a good job you certainly want to have someone tell you everyone that you do a good job right and uh, i don't know if i've got this correct today but i think Papac even launched a tool today um that allows you to measure their performance right it's 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 uh, i haven't seen it right but you know clearly the, the the message is what counts right so um i guess i guess there are some people who are reluctant some companies who are reluctant but um if history tells us one thing then it's that these companies will probably lose out against those who take a more proactive approach and try to shape the discussion rather than to oppress it yeah. Yeah. Perfect. I think that was a, a perfect ending to this, <laughs> to this session. Uh, embrace opportunity, embrace visibility, um, and use it uh, to your advantage and uh, show the world what you can do. Um, thanks very much, uh, Robin. Thanks for coming in. Likewise, thanks for having me. Thank you for tuning in. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. All these sessions are available uh, afterwards for, for downloading uh, on demand, so to speak. So thanks a lot. Great. Well, thank you.